Why, why are you doing this now? I, I'm not running a boiler room operation. I have no phony real estate uh, scam. I'm not taking any kickbacks. In the illustrious history of late night television, Johnny Carson stands as an iconic figure. Turning on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, the man who made late night TV the institution it is today. Renowned for his sharp wit and effortless charm. However, amidst the glittering array of guests who graced his stage, there existed one individual whom Carson reportedly couldn't stand. A whole new brand of humor uh, started to be displayed by him, and he was uh, in that humor questioning my masculinity. Despite Carson's affable demeanor and adeptness at navigating diverse personalities, this particular guest seemed to irk him beyond measure. Let us delve into the intriguing tale of the one guest who seemingly unsettled the unflappable Johnny Carson. Early life and career as the king of late night television. Johnny Carson, born on October 23, 1925 in Corning, Iowa, was destined to become an American icon in the realm of late night television. His early life was marked by humble beginnings in the heartland of the United States. Raised in nearby Norfolk, Nebraska, Carson's childhood was not without its challenges. His parents, Homer Lloyd Carson, a power company manager, and Ruth Hook Carson, a homemaker, instilled in him the values of hard work and perseverance. From an early age, Carson showed a natural talent for entertaining others. He developed a keen interest in magic tricks and would often perform for his family and friends. His passion for entertainment continued to grow as he participated in high school plays and developed his comedic skills. After graduating from high school, Carson enrolled at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, where he studied journalism. However, his dreams of becoming a writer were put on hold when he joined the U.S. Navy during World War II. Serving as an ensign on the USS Pennsylvania, Carson was stationed in the Pacific Ocean. It was during his time in the Navy that he began to hone his comedic talents by performing in military shows and entertaining his fellow servicemen. Following his discharge from the Navy in 1946, Carson returned to college to complete his degree. After graduating, he pursued a career in broadcasting, landing a job as a radio announcer at WOW Radio Station in Omaha, Nebraska. It was here that he adopted the stage name Johnny Carson and began to make a name for himself in the world of entertainment. Carson's big break came when he was hired as a staff announcer for the CBS television network in New York City. He quickly rose through the ranks, earning a reputation for his quick wit and affable demeanor. In 1954, he became the host of the game show Earn Your Vacation, marking the beginning of his television career. In 1957, Carson was chosen to host the daytime game show Who Do You Trust? This show, which featured Carson's trademark humor and charm, became a hit with viewers and paved the way for his future success. It was also during this time that he met his future sidekick, Ed McMahon, who would become a staple of Carson's late night shows. In 1962, Carson was tapped to replace Jack Parr as the host of The Tonight Show. His debut on October 1, 1962, marked the beginning of a legendary 30-year run as the king of late night television. With his impeccable timing, sharp wit, and ability to connect with audiences, Carson revolutionized the late-night talk show format, setting the standard for generations of hosts to come. Throughout his career, Carson welcomed countless celebrities, politicians, and entertainers to his couch, earning him the nickname, The King of Late Night. His influence extended far beyond the television screen, shaping popular culture and becoming a beloved American icon. In 1992, after three decades at the helm of The Tonight Show, Carson bid farewell to late-night television, leaving behind a legacy that would endure for years to come. He retired to his home in Malibu, California, where he enjoyed a quiet life away from the spotlight until his passing in 2005. Johnny Carson's early life and career are a testament to the power of talent, perseverance, and the American dream. Family Ties Carson's family life began with his marriage to Jody Wolcott in 1948. The couple had three sons together, Christopher, Richard, known as Rick, and Corey. However, their marriage ended in divorce in 1963. Rick Carson, the middle child, struggled with mental illness, a taboo subject during that era. 
Rick's mental health challenges strained his relationship with his father. Despite Johnny's success in the entertainment industry, he grappled with feelings of inadequacy and guilt regarding his son's condition. Tragedy struck the Carson family in June 1991 when Rick's car went over a cliff at Morro Bay, California, resulting in his death. Prior to this tragic event, communication between Johnny and Rick had ceased, reflecting the strained father-son bond. Carson's second marriage was to Joanna Copeland in 1963, but it lasted only two years due to Copeland's affair with football player Frank Gifford. This marital turmoil caused Carson significant emotional distress, although he remained relatively private about his personal struggles. In 1972, Carson married for the third time to Joanna Holland, a former model. Their marriage lasted a decade before ending in divorce in 1983. Despite the dissolution of their marriage, Holland remained on good terms with Carson. Carson's fourth and final marriage was to Alexis Moss, whom he wed in 1987. The couple remained together until Carson's death in 2005. Moss was a constant presence in Carson's life during his later years and was known for her discretion and support. Throughout his marriages, Carson's relationships with his children from his first marriage remained a focal point. Despite the challenges and tragedies within his family, Carson maintained a successful career in television, becoming one of the most influential figures in late-night entertainment. Battles with addiction. Carson's addiction to alcohol manifested in various ways, from social drinking to excessive consumption that led to legal troubles. One notable incident occurred in 1982 when Carson was arrested for driving under the influence while behind the wheel of a DeLorean. The incident brought his struggles with alcoholism into the public eye, shedding light on a problem he had long battled privately. Despite facing legal consequences, including a plea of no contest and a three-year probationary period, Carson continued to grapple with his addiction. He acknowledged his struggles in interviews, openly admitting to his dependency on alcohol and the challenges he faced in overcoming it. In a candid interview with 60 Minutes in 1977, Carson confessed, I don't do well with alcohol at all. I really don't. Carson's addiction also impacted his personal relationships, including his marriages. His second wife, Joanne Copeland, reportedly struggled with his drinking habits, and his battles with alcoholism may have contributed to marital strain. The toll of his addiction on his family life and relationships added another layer of complexity to his personal struggles. Throughout his career, Carson's battles with addiction were a recurring theme, serving as a reminder of the challenges he faced behind the curtain of his public persona. Despite his success as a television icon, his struggles with alcoholism underscored the human frailty that lurked beneath the surface of his charismatic on-screen presence. Infidelity and Rumors Johnny Carson's personal life was not devoid of controversy, particularly when it came to rumors of infidelity and marital strife. Despite his public image as a charming and witty television host, Carson's private life often made headlines, and allegations of his own infidelity added fuel to the fire. One of the most significant instances of rumored infidelity involved Carson's second wife, Joanne Copeland. Reports surfaced alleging that Copeland had engaged in an affair with football player Frank Gifford, which ultimately led to the dissolution of her marriage to Carson. The affair reportedly took place during Carson's tenure as host of The Tonight Show and caused considerable strain on their relationship. Furthermore, rumors swirled that Carson himself engaged in extramarital affairs during his marriages, adding complexity to the narrative of his personal life. One such rumored affair was with Playboy model Angel Tompkins, which allegedly occurred both during Carson's marriage to Copeland and after divorce proceedings had commenced. Carson's lavish gifts to Tompkins, including a Rolls Royce and expensive jewelry, fueled speculation about the nature of their relationship. These rumors of infidelity not only affected Carson's personal life, but also his public image and relationships with colleagues. For example, Carson's rumored affair with Tompkins reportedly caused concern during his divorce from Copeland, as it could potentially impact the legal proceedings. Additionally, Carson's relationships with other celebrities, such as his strained interactions with Bob Hope and Joan Rivers, 
were subject to scrutiny in light of these rumors. Despite the allegations of infidelity, Carson remained relatively private about his personal life, rarely addressing the rumors directly in public. However, the tabloid speculation surrounding his marriages and relationships added a layer of complexity to his public persona, challenging the perception of him as a beloved television personality. The Wayne Newton Affair The story begins with Carson considering the purchase of the Aladdin Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada in 1980. However, after deliberation, Carson withdrew from the deal, leading to the property's acquisition by Wayne Newton and other investors. This move prompted media speculation that Carson had lost the deal to Newton, adding fuel to an already simmering rivalry. As tensions mounted, Carson, known for his quick wit and humor, began making jabs at Newton's expense on The Tonight Show. Some of these jokes reportedly focused on Newton's personal life, including references to his romantic relationships and public image. The jokes were typical of Carson's style, but they struck a nerve with Newton who took offense at being the target of Carson's humor. Newton, a well-known entertainer and Las Vegas icon, wasn't one to back down from a challenge. Frustrated by Carson's jokes and public jabs, Newton decided to confront Carson directly. In a bold move, Newton drove to Carson's studio to address the issue face to face. The confrontation was a clash between two titans of the entertainment industry, each standing their ground in defense of their reputation. During the encounter, Newton reportedly demanded that Carson cease making jokes about him, particularly those of a personal nature. Carson, recognizing Newton's seriousness, acquiesced to the request, diffusing the tension between them. However, the incident left an indelible mark on their relationship and added another layer to their ongoing feud. The Wayne Newton affair garnered attention from both the media and the public, with speculation and rumors swirling about the true nature of Carson and Newton's animosity. While the specifics of their feud may never be fully known, the incident served as a reminder of the complexities and rivalries that can exist within the entertainment industry. The Joan Rivers Rift the rift between Johnny Carson and Joan Rivers is a saga woven with intricate details, personal conflicts, and professional rivalry that unfolded against the backdrop of the late-night television landscape. Joan Rivers, a comedian known for her sharp wit and bold humor, rose to prominence as a frequent guest and eventual guest host on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Her appearances on the show catapulted her into the spotlight and solidified her status as one of the leading comedic voices of her time. However, tensions began to simmer beneath the surface as Rivers' star continued to rise. In 1983, she made history by becoming the first woman to host her own late-night talk show, The Late Show Starring Joan Rivers, on the newly established Fox network. This move, seen as a bold step in her career, marked the beginning of the rift between Rivers and Carson. Carson, who had been a mentor and supporter of Rivers, felt betrayed by her decision to accept a competing late-night hosting gig. Their relationship soured further when Rivers' show directly competed with The Tonight Show, airing in the same time slot on a rival network. Carson viewed Rivers' move as disloyalty and a breach of trust, especially considering their long-standing professional association. The rift between Carson and Rivers deepened when Rivers claimed in her memoir that she and Carson had a brief romantic relationship during their time working together. This revelation added fuel to the fire, further straining their already fragile relationship. Carson, who was notoriously private about his personal life, felt blindsided and betrayed by Rivers' public disclosure. The animosity between Carson and Rivers played out in the media, with both parties making veiled references and snide remarks about each other in interviews and public appearances. Rivers, known for her brash and unapologetic demeanor, refused to back down or apologize for her career choices, further escalating the feud. Despite their once close relationship, Carson and Rivers never reconciled before Carson's passing in 2005. The rift between them serves as a cautionary tale of the complexities of friendship, loyalty, and ambition in the cutthroat world of entertainment. Relationship with Bob Hope 
Johnny Carson's relationship with legendary comedian Bob Hope was marked by a mix of admiration and frustration, characterized by Carson's reported dislike for Hope's scripted approach to appearances on The Tonight Show. Hope, a veteran entertainer known for his quick wit and comedic timing, was a frequent guest on Carson's show. However, behind the scenes, Carson harbored a growing dissatisfaction with Hope's rehearsed and prepared demeanor. Their relationship played out on the set of The Tonight Show, where Hope's appearances became increasingly scripted, with his jokes and quips pre-planned and rehearsed. Carson, known for his spontaneous and improvisational style, found this approach stifling and artificial. He craved genuine, off-the-cuff interactions with his guests, which he felt were lacking whenever Hope appeared. The tension between Carson and Hope was palpable, with Carson reportedly becoming increasingly frustrated with each rehearsed appearance. Despite his respect for Hope's status as a comedy icon, Carson couldn't overlook what he perceived as a lack of authenticity in their interactions. Their on-screen banter, once lively and entertaining, began to feel forced and scripted to Carson, leading to a growing sense of disillusionment. Behind closed doors, Carson would express his frustrations with Hope's approach to his staff and close associates. He felt that Hope's reliance on prepared material detracted from the spontaneity and natural flow of the show, undermining the essence of what made The Tonight Show a beloved late-night institution. Their relationship was further strained by Hope's insistence on maintaining control over his appearances, dictating the terms and conditions of his segments on the show. Carson, accustomed to being the driving force behind The Tonight Show, found it challenging to accommodate Hope's demands while maintaining his own creative vision for the program. Despite their differences, Carson remained respectful of Hope's contributions to the world of comedy and entertainment. He recognized Hope's status as a trailblazer in the industry and acknowledged the influence he had on generations of comedians, including himself. Rivalry with Tom Snyder in Late Night Johnny Carson's rivalry with Tom Snyder in late night television was a significant aspect of both their careers, marked by tension, criticism, and competition for viewership. The rivalry emerged in the late 1970s when Snyder began hosting The Tomorrow Show, which aired after Carson's iconic The Tonight Show. Tom Snyder, known for his distinctive style and conversational approach, brought a different flavor to late night television compared to Carson's polished and mainstream appeal. This contrast laid the groundwork for a rivalry that would capture the attention of audiences and industry insiders alike. Snyder's show, The Tomorrow Show, aired on NBC following Carson's The Tonight Show. Despite airing on the same network, the two hosts had distinctly different approaches to late-night entertainment. While Carson's show was known for its celebrity interviews, comedy sketches, and monologues, Snyder's program delved into more serious topics, often featuring in-depth interviews and discussions about current events, politics, and culture. The rivalry between Carson and Snyder was not just about ratings and viewership. It was also fueled by personal and professional differences. Carson, a seasoned veteran of television, was critical of Snyder's hosting style, often dismissing him as lacking talent and interest. This criticism was not lost on Snyder, who felt the pressure to prove himself in the competitive late-night landscape. The rivalry between Carson and Snyder played out both on-screen and off-screen. While Carson maintained his dominance in the ratings, Snyder garnered a loyal following for his unconventional approach to late-night television. The two hosts occasionally exchanged barbs through interviews and public statements, adding fuel to the rivalry. One notable incident occurred when Carson publicly criticized Snyder during a night out in a Los Angeles bar in the late 1970s. Carson's remarks about Snyder's lack of talent and interest in the industry further fueled the tension between the two hosts. The guest Carson couldn't stand, Charlie Callis. Charlie Callis, a renowned comedian, found himself on the receiving end of Johnny Carson's disdain, marking one of the few guests Carson openly disliked. Born Charles Callias, he made his mark in the comedy scene with his distinctive rapid-fire delivery and unique facial expressions. The tension between Carson and Callis stemmed from an incident on The Tonight Show in the 1970s. Callis, 
known for his unpredictable and sometimes disruptive behavior, appeared as a guest on Carson's show. However, during his segment, Callus's antics veered into territory that Carson found intolerable. As the segment progressed, Callus's humor took a turn that Carson deemed disrespectful and disruptive to the flow of the show. Callus's rapid-fire delivery, coupled with his tendency to interrupt, grated on Carson's nerves, leading to visible frustration from the typically composed host. Despite attempts to steer the conversation back on track, Callus continued with his unpredictable behavior, causing Carson to lose patience. The tension between the two escalated, with Carson's irritation palpable to both the studio audience and viewers at home. Ultimately, the segment with Callus ended abruptly, with Carson cutting to a commercial break earlier than planned. The uncomfortable exchange left a lasting impression on Carson, who reportedly expressed his displeasure with Callus's behavior backstage. Following the incident, Carson made it clear that Callus was not welcome to return as a guest on The Tonight Show. The rift between the two comedians was evident, and Carson's disapproval of Callus's style of comedy became well known in the entertainment industry. The fallout from the encounter had repercussions for Callus's career, as being blacklisted from The Tonight Show meant losing out on valuable exposure to a nationwide audience. While Callus continued to perform and make appearances elsewhere, the incident with Carson left a stain on his reputation in the comedy community. In hindsight, the clash between Carson and Callis serves as a reminder of the delicate balance between comedic freedom and respecting the boundaries of a television program's format. While Callis's unorthodox style may have endeared him to some audiences, it ultimately clashed with Carson's expectations for his show's guests. Thanks for watching another episode. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.